Year 5 lesson in design and technology. This lesson we're going to be learning about computer aided design. Your learning objectives are to learn about computer aided design and its advantages and disadvantages in the design industry and then to develop your computer aided design skills in a program called SketchUp. Before learning about CAD, we need to provide some context. So let's look at CAD and CAM. So CAD stands for Computer Aided Design, and CAM stands for Computer Aided Manufacture. CAD and CAM are really important part of designing and making products. They're used in lots of in different industries, from food packaging to component manufacture. As mentioned, CAD stands for Computer Aided Design and it involves designing products on a computer rather than using a pencil or paper. CAD software packages allow you to make 2D or 3D designs. Examples of CAD software include 2D Design, SolidWorks and SketchUp. SketchUp is what we're going to be using today. The main advantages of CAD are that it helps designers model and change their designs quickly. It's easy to experiment with alternative colours and forms. You can often spot problems before making anything and therefore saving on cost. And less space is needed for making prototypes because we can make virtual models. Now that we've briefly looked into what computer aided design is, we can move on to the main bulk of the lesson, which is learning to use SketchUp. SketchUp is a 3D modeling application. It has a wide range of drawing applications, such as architectural, interior design, landscape architecture, civil and mechanical engineering, film and video game design. SketchUp provide a free version, which you can use online First, you have to set up an account, and the link is on the page here. Now, if you've already managed to set up your SketchUp account, then that's great. But if not, don't worry, we'll cover that in the tutorial to follow. In the tutorial, you're going to make a simple camera. So all you'll need to do is watch the video follow the instructions and enjoy. So let's start by setting up our SketchUp account. I'm going to type in, you can see I've typed it in there, SketchUp for web, click enter, and you'll see that it's the top hit. So I'm going to click on that link and you'll get this page here. And you want to click on start modeling down here so click on start modeling now my email address is already in there because i already have an account but you'll need to set up your account that means you'll need an email address and you'll have to set up a password and you may need to verify that account unless it's an apple or a google account and then you don't need to verify so i'm going to go on to the next stage to put my password in and I can sign in. You know you've been successful when you get this animation here. Okay, and then it's time to start creating new and we're gonna work in millimeters. Okay, so this is your main screen and you're ready to start making models now. Before we do, uh, a few points. We've got the main tools on the left and the right hand side. These are our main tools. And whenever we click on a tool, we get further options. So we need to bear that in mind. Okay. Okay. Again, before we start, we need to know how to sort of navigate around the screen. So with your mouse, you've got the left click and the right click, and you should have in between a little scroll wheel which you can click down or you can you can roll or scroll. So let's start with that. 
I'm going to... I can zoom in and zoom out using the scroll wheel. Now, if you've got a scroll wheel that clicks down, you can click that and it will allow you to orbit around the screen. Like so. Now, if you keep that held down and you press shift on the keyboard, it will also allow you to, this is called panning. So this is orbit and this is pan. And both of those together let you, let you get your uh, object in exactly the right position and angle and view that you want. Now, if you don't have a scroll wheel, you can't click it down. You've also got these options down here on the left, bottom left. If you click and you can see we've got orbit, pan, and we've got zoom. And that's a zoom window. So if you click, if I just wanted that, it would zoom into my selection. Okay. So we're ready to start. We can get rid of this lady. Uh, and I'm just going to press, the, I've selected and I'm going to press delete on the keyboard. And we're ready to start making. So in this tutorial, we are going to make a simple camera. Okay, so I'm going to start by making the base and I'm going to go over here and select this is the rectangle tool so I can make I can draw a rectangle. See the way as I bring it over the page, it, it snaps onto that middle point there, that center axis. I'm going to use that as my starting point. I'm going to click once and drag out and create the base shape of the camera. And to me, that looks about right. So I'm going to click and then I'm going to use my pan to put it in the center. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit with the scroll wheel. Now the first good bit is the push pull tool. Let's make it 3D. So I'm going to select that push pull tool and I'm going to click on this face. See how it's highlighted? I'm going to click and drag that up to here. Okay. That looks like a fairly chunky camera, but it looks like a camera all this. Well, it doesn't look like a camera yet, does it? But it looks like the right proportions. Okay. Now I'm going to do the lens. So this time I need to, instead of a rectangle tool, I'm going to need a circle tool. So I've selected the circle and I'm going to hover over my shape somewhere near the middle. And I'm going to click and drag that out like so. Now go back to your push pull tool. Hover over the circle so that it's highlighted. Click and drag that out. Oh, so about maybe there. That looks okay, doesn't it? Okay. Now, what else does a camera often have? Well, sometimes it can have some buttons on the top or maybe a flash. So I'm going to do a flash. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to draw a rectangle on the top. like this and then I am going to use the you guessed it push pull tool and drag that up how does that look how does that look that doesn't look quite right does it maybe I think usually these flashes kind of pop out of the top so they're on a bit of an angle now so I'm going to make this into more of a triangular shape by selecting what's called the move tool, which is down here. I'm going to click on the move tool, click and see how this move tool is highlighting in blue, these edges. I'm going to click on this edge and I'm going to dr dr drag it down all the way to the bottom, nearly to the bottom. What do you think? All the way. Now that is starting to look a bit more like a camera now. Cool. Okay, let's put some buttons on the top. Let's have, oh, 
main button on the side here, maybe for I don't know whether this is this is where it would go, but we'll put, I'm going to put my button on the side. Push pull and drag that up. And then I'm going to have like a scroll, like a dial for choosing the different settings, the different camera settings. I'm going to put this on the other side. Push pull and drag that up a little bit. Okay. Now, this flash and this lens isn't looking particularly good at the minute, so we need to try and add a little bit more, a little bit more detail there. So what I'm going to use is a tool called Offset. And you'll see what this Offset tool will do in a second. So I'm going to hover over this shape near the edge, but on the inside of the circle. Click and just drag. And see the way it's copied the shape? Just going to drag that in and that's just going to create the edge of the lens now i can either pull this out or i can push this middle bit in so go back where the offset was because that's where push pull was click and just drag that face in ever so slightly okay and that just gives it a little bit more detail looks it makes it look a little bit more realistic okay i'm going to do the same to the flash and click on the edge I'll zoom in so you can see click here and just drag in maybe to about there now should the light go slightly in or slightly out in I'm gonna do it I don't think it matters but I'm gonna just push it in like that okay I think that's looking all right What about putting some text on it? Okay, well, text is a little bit more tricky because I need to know what the size of the camera is. Now we haven't drawn this to any kind of dimensions or proportions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use um, the rectangle tool and I'm gonna draw the shape that I want the text to be in. And when I've, when I've done that, I'm going to look down at where it says dimensions and see what that says. So let's say I want it to be about this size. And that says 289. So that must be that 289 millimeters or 30 millimeters by 66. So my text only wants to be about 66, 70, 80, around 70 millimeters high. Okay, so I'm going to press escape to let that go. Escape on the keyboard. And then I'm going to find the text tool. Now, where are you, text tool? Where are you? Are you in shapes? Ah, there you are. So the rectangle tool. And can I write Sony? I shouldn't really, should I? Now look, the height there, it says 305 millimeters, but what did I say? About 70 or 80? So let's try 70. Text extrusion. That's how far the text kind of comes out. So I only want it to be out about, I don't know, five millimeters? Let's see what it looks like. Yours, depending on how big you drew your camera, yours, your settings here will be different. Okay, that let's have a let's have a look okay that that looks all right there we go sony does that look like a sony camera to you i'm not so sure okay should we put something on the back we need our our viewing screen don't we so let's say i'm going to put that there does that look right i think that's in the wrong place I'm going to move it over with the move tool and then I can ha maybe have some buttons here and a frame maybe a little frame and maybe just pull that frame out slightly with a push pull tool there we go and then I could put some buttons on here now, I'm not going to be very. I'm not going to be 
particularly careful. I'm just going to draw Andreville. No. There we go. I'll just do two for now. Drag those out. Look what if I if I click on the edge of that, it matches the sizes. Look. See that? Sounds clever, isn't it? Okay. Right, I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave it there. I think that looks okay. Uh I feel like something should go there though, that's the only thing. But I think that's that's probably the flash. And I've drawn the flash at the top. Anyway, I'm gonna add it in. It's not a very accurate camera. Right. So that is done. And now all I want to do is give it a bit of colour. But what I don't know what colour are cameras usually? Just put it in a bit of a grey colour. Okay, let's see. Materials here. Click on that. And I'm gonna I've got some colours here that I can use, but I've got more options in browse. Although sometimes it takes a little bit longer to load. Oh there it is, great. So go to colours. And I'm gonna be boring and go for a grey. Maybe a darker grey. And all I've done is select the colour palette, the swatch, and I'm gonna just click on those parts of the camera. Like so. Okay, and you can do your the buttons, you can do any colour you want. That's up to you. You, just have to, you can colour all those little bits in. I'm going to undo that. But really, that's it. So that's your first go at SketchUp. Oh, forgot about you. And I'm going to put it like that. I think that looks quite nice. And do you know what? This axis is getting on my nerves now, so I want to move it. So let's see I'm going to click on these glasses and I'm going to deselect this axis there we go and hide this screen with see where it says close panel get that nice and central and there we go there's my camera right don't forget to save it save click on your sketchup folder 